Hey everyone, welcome back. I made some free updates to my site, neatcode.io, which if you're new, it's basically a site I created to help people prepare for coding interviews for free. And first things first, let's just address the elephant in the room, which is the logo at the top left. Don't ask me how I came up with it. All I can really say is it was a lot of late nights staying up, scratching my head, trying to figure out what the best thing would be. But what you're probably more interested in is that now you can finally sign in and save all your local progress. Let me show you how it's going to work. Let's say you've already been using the site before, you've been saving your progress locally, but if you go to a different device, it doesn't save your progress, and that can be kind of annoying if you're working from different computers. But the first time that you log in, it will basically take all of your local progress and save it to your account. And you can choose to use your Google account or your GitHub account. I'm going to do Google. And immediately you can see that all of your progress was saved to your account. And let's say we complete a few more stack problems and then we are finished. And then let's say we log out. So when you log out, you can see that your progress is gone. You refresh. Uh, there's nothing there, but if you sign back in and your progress immediately loads. By the way, when you're signed in, you will have some indication of what account you are signed into. For example, you can see I'm on Google. I can sign out of my Google account. I think that's a pretty nice quality of life feature to have because sometimes when I sign in with a provider, I always forget which one I used. There were a ton of people who asked for this feature, so I'm hoping that it's helpful. But if you don't want to sign in, if you're fine with just having your progress be local, you don't have to. Like, it'll still work the same as it did before, where your progress will be saved to your browser. In terms of performance, I tested it, and I think it should be pretty good, but it'll be a little bit slower. Like, if you uncheck a problem, there's like a slight delay, and that basically means that the request is still going through, like it hasn't been saved. But as soon as you see the progress get updated, you know that your progress has been saved. It's just slightly slower than if you were doing it locally, of course. And you might have noticed we added support for a bunch of more code solutions. At this point, we have pretty much all of the Python solutions, all of the C++ solutions, and about half of the Java solutions and half of the JavaScript solutions. And there was actually one person who added all of the C++ solutions. Like on the GitHub repo, you can see that one person added all the C++ solutions. So a huge shout out to them. If anybody else wants to contribute other solutions, especially Java or JavaScript, please feel free to make a pull request on the repo. Link will be in the description. You can also access it through the site. And a few quality of life features. If you open up the code, you have the option of viewing it in the site itself, which I think is a little bit more convenient. But if it's not convenient for you, you can still go and view it on GitHub in a separate tab if you would like to. I think this does make it a lot easier. And pretty much the same thing with the video solutions. You can view it directly in the site, or of course you could open it in a new tab if you would like to. And I think that kind of also makes things a little bit easier. So I think we definitely are headed in the right direction with this site. I'm really interested in hearing what you guys think and what kind of additional features you guys would like to add. There's a couple that I wanna add, which are basically resetting your entire progress. I wanna add just like a single button to do that. If you wanna like restart your entire list. But even more importantly, a lot of people have requested if you want to kind of go blind into the list without knowing like what pattern each problem belongs to, I want to kind of make an entire list view of that. And that should be a pretty easy thing to implement. And there's also some performance improvements in terms of switching between the two lists. Before what it was doing, it was actually re-rendering this entire list component if you switch between lists, but now it's not doing that. You can see that the lists actually stay open now when you switch between them. That's because it doesn't have to re-render the entire thing. It's a little bit more smooth performance-wise. The site is also a bit more responsive now, so you can see uh, as the screen shrinks, things get a little bit more like fitted. But to be honest, I don't know how helpful this is going to be. I don't know how many people are actually using this site on their phones or anything. Oh wait, there actually are people using this on their phone. It looks like about 7% on mobile. To be honest, I really didn't expect that. I don't know how many of you guys are doing leak code problems on your phone, but I definitely would not recommend it. But I guess if you can perfect the art of writing code on your phone, uh, leak code hard questions should not be a problem for you. But overall, I had a lot of fun working on this site. Let me know if you want me to make a video on how I like implemented it and everything. I think I really underestimated how difficult doing the front end would be, and I probably should have relied a lot more on like a CSS library. Like I pretty much did all of the styling and like the components myself, like this dialogue component, I did it myself. And same with everything else pretty much. 
I think a lot of people underestimate how difficult front-end development can be, myself included. This definitely turned out to be a lot more complicated than I thought in terms of like switching between lists. Like when you log in, log out, like it uses a different progress system, like a different storage system, local versus like using an actual database. But I'd definitely be happy on making a video on how I implemented the site if people are interested in something like that. And let's be honest, how many free sites offer this much functionality? Not many that I've seen, I can definitely say that. But I've gotten so many messages and emails from people telling me how this site has really, really helped them. And I hope that with these improvements, it can be even more helpful to a lot more people. I really pride myself on how much content I've created and I've made it completely free. So many people on my Discord have messaged me saying thank you for the site, thank you for the videos, and that really means a lot to me. And a lot of people on the Discord were, were requesting this sign-in feature, so I really hope that it is what you were hoping for. And by the way, if you want to join my Discord, you can do so in the top right of the site. If you want to connect with a bunch of other people going through a similar coding interview grind, I highly recommend uh, joining the Discord. You can also message me on there. Usually I read some of it, but it's actually grown a lot more than I expected. So it's kind of hard to keep up with all the messages. I've got so many cool things planned, not just for the neatcode.io site, but also for the YouTube channel. And I'm really, really looking forward to sharing that with all of you. So please stay tuned. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing to stay tuned for some updates. And if you found this video helpful, please leave a like. It really supports the channel a lot. And hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.